Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Santana and this week I'm going to be showing you how to make Gujarati Ondvo. I will fight you for the corner piece of the Ondvo. It has that caramelised goodness on both edges and on the top. Technically this dish is called Handvo in Gujarati. Um, my family are from East Africa so we call it Ondvo with an O. Um, everyone will have a different way of saying it. The pronunciation will differ from family to family depending on your roots and where you're from. But essentially it is a savoury lentil and rice cake which has been fermented. Now there are many different ways of making this dish and today I'm going to show you my favourite way. If you're ready, let's begin. Tap the link in the description box for a full list of ingredients you need to make this recipe. This recipe begins by mixing together basmati rice, split pigeon peas also known as tur or tuerdar and janadal, which are split chickpeas. Mix the rice and lentils together before giving them a good wash in cold water. Once the water becomes cloudy like this, drain it off and wash again in fresh water. You'll need to repeat this two or three times. Cover the rice and lentils with around 700 millilitres of cold water and soak for three hours. You'll know the rice and lentils are ready if they break when you press them between your fingers. Drain off all of this water, reserving around 100 millilitres. The next step is to prepare the batter and to do this, grind the soaked lentils and rice in a blender until they're completely smooth. You may need to add around 100 millilitres of the soaking liquid as necessary, but it's important not to add any more than this as this can affect the overall texture of the envo. Keep stopping the blender to scrape down the sides as necessary. Once it's smooth, pale and creamy, you can stop. This is the texture we're looking for in our batter. Pour the mixture back into a large bowl and, as tempting as it may be, don't rinse the blender jar out with any additional water. You can always use a silicon spatula to remove all of the mixture. Now we'll add a few more ingredients starting with coarse semolina, some methi or fenugreek seeds which will help speed up the fermentation. Beat this mixture well using clean hands. The heat from them will also help the fermentation happen quickly. The last thing we need to add is some very sour plain yoghurt. I find that this yoghurt bought from my local South Asian retailer is the best for this job. Now cover this with a tight fitting lid and leave it in a warm place to ferment. This could take anywhere from 12 hours to 24 hours depending on how warm it is. If it's a really warm day then it may take less than 12 hours. You'll know the mixture is fermented by the smell. Once it starts smelling a little bit sour and develops a layer of water on top, it's ready. You may also notice a few small bubbles appearing on the surface. I like my envo to include a mountain of vegetables, so here we go. Some diced potatoes, grated courgette or bottle gourd, also known as dudi. Some grated carrots, Make sure you squeeze as much water as possible out of vegetables like courgette and carrots. Some peas, I'm using frozen. Sweet corn and onion. At this stage you can also add some whole peanuts if you like. Next we'll add some finely chopped green chilies, ground turmeric, ginger paste, salt and sugar. A touch of lemon juice. Now mix all of this together. I am infatuated with the dark treacle brown crust atop my ondo. It's the equivalent of a corner piece of brownie or lasagna. Those crispy edges carry so much flavour and texture. In my recipe I do a double tempering and a double bake. The first tempering is going to go inside the mix. To do this, heat some oil in a small saucepan. Once it's hot, add in some mustard seeds. Once they've popped, add asafoetida. 
Now pour the simple tempering straight into the onvo batter. To give our onvo rise and lift, we're going to activate the mixture. Combine chickpea flour with baking powder and baking soda. A little mixy mixy. Now add this into your onvo batter. Whisk vigorously for around 90 seconds. The batter will almost double in volume and turn a pale shade of yellow. This final step is really important and will produce an onvo that is both light and spongy. It's important not to overmix because this can deflate the batter. We now need to work quickly to get this into the oven. Immediately pour this batter into a well greased 20 cm tin. There's no need to line it. Some people like to pour a tempering directly over the batter before it goes into the oven, but I prefer to do it afterwards. Bake the envo in a preheated oven at 160 degrees Celsius, that's 320 degrees Fahrenheit for 90 minutes, or until a skewer inserted into the center of the envo comes out clean. Now we'll prepare the second tempering. Heat oil in a small pan. Add mustard seeds. Once they've stopped popping and crackling, add sesame seeds. Let these sizzle away for a few moments before throwing in some fresh curry leaves. Now some asafoetida. If you like, you can also add in some slit green chilies. Once the second tempering has toasted up very slightly, it's time to spoon it all over the baked onvo. Make sure you get all of that aromatic oil and the toasty seeds out of the pan. Spread it all over the surface. Some might say that onvo is the more complex cousin of tokra, a cacophony of various textures and flavours from ground lentils, rice, spices, vegetables, seeds and nuts. On top of this, there's a sour dimension, courtesy of the fermentation the onvo batter undergoes. Not only does all of this add multiple layers of interest to the dish, it also makes it lighter on the tummy in comparison to other Indian snacks. This is why it makes for such a great breakfast. Now bake this for a further 10 minutes at 200 degrees Celsius, that's 400 degrees Fahrenheit. It should take about 10 minutes to brown the top to a deep caramel colour. Allow the onvo to cool in the tin for one hour before turning it out. Cut it into pieces and serve it as a snack with hot chai. And here is my favourite style of deep dish onvo with a dark caramel coloured crust. It's full of the aromatic, savoury, sweet and sour flavours I grew up eating in my Gujarati home. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, then please do consider subscribing. I upload new and delicious Indian vegetarian and vegan recipes every week.